With E3 on the horizon, there's really not much Grimm can talk about, so for this week, he takes us down memory lane, looking at the story of Halo Wars. We open with a summary of the game's narrative written by Grimm. From the icy tundras of Harvest, to the paradise world of Arcadia, to the ancient and terrifying S.H.I.E.L.D. world, all culminating with the ship being lost in space, the UNSC labeling her as Lost with All Hands. Interestingly, the summary practically confirms that this story is going to be set after Halo 5, saying, For nearly 30 years, the Spirit of Fire would drift. Pretty much lands you right in 2558, if not a little later. Along with this summary, fans can opt to re-familiarize themselves with the story via the Halo 101 five-parter, Lost with All Hands. Originally created sometime in the pre-2012 Waypoint era, the videos have finally made their way to YouTube for all to view, and even those with the most flawless of memories will find themselves enjoying a viewing of this video series. Link on the screen and in the description if you care to view the videos for yourself. The next section announces that Halo 5 will be receiving an arcade mode for campaign, basically Halo 5's version of the metagame scoring from Halo 3 and ODST, now known as Score Attack. More on this mode and other campaign additions were covered in this week's community update, which is also linked in the description. Finally, we take a look at what seems to be the most loved of air vehicles in the Halo community, and for good reason if you ask me, the AV-22 Sparrowhawk. The vehicle shares a number of similarities with other Aerodyne craft, including the AV-14 Hornet, the AV-19 Skyhawk, the AV-30 Kestrel, and the AV-49... something. Interesting. A new Halo Wars 2 vehicle, perhaps? Anyway, the Sparrow Hawk is an attack VTOL with combined turbojet and dual lift fan propulsion, auto cannon armament, and Cyberlink compatible fly by light avionics. This VTOL saw great success against Covenant forces towards the end of the Harvest campaigns, serving multiple roles as a gunship escort, aerial security, and operating in hunter killer squadrons. Though combat losses were high, Sparrow Hawk pilots always accumulated enviable kill counts. The Sparrowhawk's primary weapons are dual GAU 23AW long barrel rotary autocannons, which fire 20mm ammunitions. The secondary weapon is a chin mounted variant of the Gungnir M6 directed energy system. That does it for the main article, bringing us to the featured universe entries this week Spartan 130 Alice Treske, Spartan 042 Douglas Rutland, and Spartan 092 Jerome Cable. Collectively, these three were known as Red Team. Alice was born on July 17, 2511 on the Colony of Passage, Douglas on April 21, 2511 on Asphodel, and Jerome on May 8, 2511 on Minister. All were born on backwater colonies and all targeted by Oni for the Spartan 2 program. Interestingly, the article for these Spartans would seem to imply that their red team was a separate unit, akin to more a black or gray team, noting that over time, Jerome engaged Covenant head-to-head -head a number of times, later becoming the leader of red team. Typically, Spartan 2s would break into teams during missions, the main group being called Blue Team, the next group called Red, the third called Green. It could be that I'm misinterpreting what I'm reading, though. Also of interest is all three Spartans are listed as Senior Chief Petty Officers. When the Spartans graduated, they were given the rank of Petty Officer 2nd Class, and as far as we know, they generally didn't rank up, Master Chief John 117, Lieutenant Fred 104, and Lieutenant Kurt 051 being the exceptions. I have to wonder if these ranks were posthumously awarded when the Spirit of Fire was declared lost with all hands. But that's it for this week. Before we go, I want to give a shout out to the Halo Bowl. What is the Halo Bowl, you ask? In a nutshell, it was a competitive competition between a few Halo podcast groups that was meant to raise money for Gamers Outreach, an organization that provides, quote, children in hospitals recreation and therapy through the power of video games. People from Podtacular, Podcast Evolved, Drunken Halo, and Delta Halo Podcasts got together with a goal of raising $4,000 for the charity, and currently have around $1,600. Check out the link below to watch the tournament on Twitch, and consider donating to a great cause. I've also left links for each podcast in case you want to check out their amazing content. And that wraps things up for now. E3 is almost here, and you can bet I'll be covering every little thing that's revealed over the course of that week. Until then, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.